سلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وانبياء الي اجمعين الحمد لله من thanks and gratitude belong to Allah the Lord of all we ask Allah to bless and bestow peace on all his prophets and messengers their families followers and supporters and all who traverse the path and i greet you with the best of all greetings the greetings of the heavens assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i'm your host on radio uh, on our ramadan special brought to you by radio al muslim as in conjunction with our sister radio dnc radio distinct radio this is actually a, the 10th edition of ramadan special so we started way back 10 years ago alhamdulillah uh, for the journey so far so inshallah we have a beautiful topic a topic many of us you know we ponder we 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 at, at some point in our life we just take a break you hit the break and you're like why am I, why 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 am i here what is the purpose of the
spending the cost of Allah. Allah says, وَمَنْ يَبْخَلْ فَإِنَّمَا يَبْخَلُ وَالنَّفْسِ Whoever becomes greedy and stingy and they don't they don't want to spend for the sake of Allah, they are only greedy and stingy for themselves. وَاللَّهُ الْغَنِيُّ وَأَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَى Allah is, Allah is free of need while we are the ones that are in need. We are the ones that are limited in our resources. All right? Then Allah says, this is my point of reference, وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُ أَمْثَالَكُمْ Allah is saying, and if you turn away and you don't spend for the cost of Allah, Allah would replace you with another people. people. He, he does not need us. <laughs> Allah would replace us with another people and they will not be like us, meaning they would worship and they would obey even on top of the free will that they have. Mm. So mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you and I mm. because he wanted to give us free will and he also wanted us to worship him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for every human, makanan fil jannah wa makanan fil nar. Every human being has a place in al-jannah and a place in hell. hell. Mm -hmm. So when we carry out our functions and we go about our business and we act, the way we want to act either we believe in allah and we obey him or we disobey him we are only building the the space that we have in one of both locations either in Jannah or either in hell and whichever one we finish building before we pass on that's where we're gonna go yeah. may allah count us among the of our genital for the downs i mean i mean <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we still have a few more minutes for questions. Uh, so this is the question and answer segment. Feel free to bring your questions, comments, or contributions at 817-717-5685. And if you happen to be on any of our social media platform, you can also leave us a comment. So we'll read, our, uh, we'll read your comment, uh, be it a question. We'll read it to the Ustaz. So again, uh, our guest lecturer today is Ustaz Muhammad Hamad Shaib. Uh, is our lecturer. And the topic today is the purpose of uh, life or creation according to Islam. So now we know the reason why we're here. We're here to worship Allah. Because in one of the verse, Allah said he has not created man, kind and, and, and the jinn kind, except for us to you know, he didn't create us for fun, but he created us to worship him. Now, let me quickly ask, just for the benefit of myself and my listeners as well. So now we know the, the reason why we're here. So what is the uh, essence of prayer, of, of worship? So why? So worship now, I, I know the last question kind of covered it a little bit. But uh, so now what is the essence? Now he created us f for us to worship him. So maybe I can answer my question myself so is it to attain that permanent happiness you talked about or does it have to do with something else so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need our worship no however he had created hell and he had created heaven paradise no. and he cannot or he will not he will not simply put some people in paradise and put some people in hell. Mm. You and I will say, oh, he's an unjust God. God. Right? Mm. So you and I have to come up with acts of obedience unto him and his prophets that would make us eligible for his mercy so that we can enter into paradise. Mm. so that we can enter into paradise so if we come up with a lot of acts of worship that he had prescribed through his prophets وسلم, on the day of judgment those will make us eligible eligible considerable for his mercy and without that mercy no one enters into paradise mm. 
So, that said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to wrong anybody. He does not want to wrong anybody. So when certain people receive their book of deeds with their left hand, they know what they've done, Mm. right? Mm. They know they don't deserve to go to paradise. So they will try to hide their hands. Some will try to even run away from the things that they've done. Mm. They claim, they would claim that they should be eligible for paradise, but Allah would say, okay, are you sure? He says, yes, I don't want nobody to testify against me. Allah says, mm-hmm. Allah says, mm-hmm. Today, if you don't want anyone to testify against you, that's fine. You yourself, you're, you're, you're enough to testify Frank against yourself. Frank and then Allah commands the mouth, the person's lips to be sealed mm-hmm. and their hands would begin to speak and their feet would begin to testify. In another part in the Quran, this person would now start, start saying, Lima, they, they will start cursing the parts of their body and they will start asking those parts, I'm trying to save you from going to hell. Why are you testifying against me? Mm-hmm. And the parts of the body will say, and talk on Allah Lady and talk the shade. The God that makes everything speaks <laughs> had commanded us to speak. So the actions that we do is for ourselves. It's not for Allah. Allah does not need that. It's for ourselves. If we've not done enough and our sins outweighs our good deeds, guess what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make some Muslims, may Allah not count us among them, he would make them go to hell first. Hmm. He would will make them go to hell first because their, 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 their sins outweighs hmm. their, good deeds. their good deeds. So they will get punished in hell and then they will be brought out of hell and washed in the river beside al jannah and then they'll be entered into al jannah even at that they will have some marks in their bodies so the people of al jannah will still be able to identify them as oh Mm. this person had been to hell before they came here Mm. those group of people are called al jahannami yun -jahannami Yun. they've been to al they've been to hell hell. before they came to al jannah May Allah not count us among the set of people, Amen. you know. Amen. May Allah give us express entry into al Jannah without questioning and without punishment. Amen. So our actions are only for us. Allah does not need it. The same ruling can be placed upon Hajj. When we go to Hajj and we have to slaughter, Allah says he does not need, he does not need the meat or the bone or the blood of the animal that we slaughter. All of these is for us. It's for us to get the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La yanallahu luhu muha. Allah does not need it. I hope that may, I hope that, that answers the question. Yeah, it does. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khairan. We thank you for those uh, beautiful response. May Allah contri- continue to increase you in, in, in knowledge. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we are coming close to the end of the segment. Uh, we have about six minutes to the end of the segment. I believe uh, uh, no questions from our listeners via the phone number. But feel free, you can, uh, if you want to, if you happen to be grandma or someone, I mean, you feel free Feel free to ask your question in any language. So we actually entertain both languages on this platform. So it could, it could come in Yoruba language or it could come in English language yeah the last but not least uh question is uh, a lady is asking this question she said our question is a question that many females that's on the minds of many females were we females created to worship allah then to be an item of pleasure for the fulfillment of men's desires did allah create also to uh, to complement the life of men in principle so that we should serve them by enabling them to fulfill their physical desires in a permissible manner and that is why they marry us okay so often when people speak of women 
they only speak of our beauty, physical shape, and the list goes on and on. Just they describe it just like an like an uh, like an image. So the the question I is saying now, okay, we know the purpose of man is to worship Allah. So now she's trying to break it down, kind of like a deep dive into what is the purpose of women? Are we just because there are so many ayah which some ladies they don't like those ayah when uh, Allah was describing how man is the caretaker of women and there was a there was another verse where Allah says you you know enter your your um is a farm or, or garden you know whichever way you want so the mm -hmm. so yeah some women they take it very uh they they, they 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 take it personal like they felt that just an object of pleasure so is that the reason why Allah created them or we i mean are we just all here to worship Allah? It doesn't matter be it a man or a woman. But now I, I want you to focus on this lady's concern because she wanted to know now on on the I mean <laughs> for ladies <laughs> are they created to complement the life of men in principle so that uh they should serve them by enabling them to fulfill their physical desires. So is that the reason why Allah created women to fulfill fulfill uh the man's desire physical desire or whatever desire we have alhamdulillah mm -hmm. um allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that, that that the man and the woman the male and the female they are equal in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are equal in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. But when it comes to their relationship between themselves, there is different responsibilities. Mm. In the verse, you in the initial verse, you quoted the man has a responsibility over the woman. It means that the man has to take care of her, has to provide, has to do all of these things. Mm. It's a heavy load on the man, especially if you live in America here where rent is expensive. Mm. You know, it's a, it's, it's a call to duty. It's not a honor. Well, it's a, it's a honor, but it's a call it's to a call duty, to the too. responsibility mm. for, upon the man. Um, let me touch on the verse that she referred to that a woman is like the field you mm. know yeah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this verse in surah al-baqarah it's surah al-baqarah verse 223 mm. where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says mm. bismillahir rahmanir rahim nisa'ukum hadithun lakum fa'tu Allah tells us in this verse, Nisaukum Harithun Lakum, your wives are like a field where you go to plant. All right? A field where you go to plant. It's an analogy when a man and a woman have a husband and a wife have intercourse, who gets pregnant? It's the wife. The wife. Right? So it's like you go sow a seed. All right? Mm. The part of the seed that the part that holds the seed and then grows the seed, where the seed germinates from, is the earth, mm. is the farmland. So the wife is like the farmland for the woman, for, for the man. Right? Mm. The wife is like the farmland for the man. The man goes to the farmland and he sows his seed, his sperm, into the woman, and then she carries that. So Allah uses that analogy. It does not mean that the woman is solely for that reason. reason. It does not mean that it's solely for that reason. This is one of the verses. I know that she quoted these verses, but this is one of the verses that Muslims today uses 
to have a conversation with those that think that they are progressive in their ideologies. Those that think that they, a man can become a woman and a woman can become a man. Mm. Or a man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman. Those behaviors are not acceptable in Islam. Yeah. Because Allah is telling us through this verse that the man should be able to go to his spouse and sow his seed inside of her. Mm. And by the mercy of Allah, if Allah wills, wills. then she gets pregnant and have a child. Mm. But if same, same sex are allowed to cohabitate and marry, then that's going against this verse in the Quran. Yeah. I hope that, that I hope that is clear on, on that clear. front. Yeah. That is clear on that front. But in this same verse, Allah says, Wakodimu li anfusikum. In that same verse, Allah says, Wakodimu li anfusikum, which means that aside from the fact that your wife is a, is a, is like a place of sowing seed, Allah and come to come to your wife as you want. Um, come to your place of cultivating however you, you wish. You wish. However you wish is not really however you wish. You can't come to your wife when she's when she's going through her menses. Mm. You can't come to your wife when she had, when she's giving birth and she's bleeding. You can't, you know, there are there are period you can't come to your wife when she's fasting in the month of Ramadan during the day. So there's still restriction there. So that however you wish still has restriction. And then when you come to her, don't just jump on top, on top of her. Send something ahead, meaning romance her, buy her gifts, you know, do things for her to make her happy. Okay. She's not just a meat that you're just going to jump on top like that, mm. right? So that's what that verse is saying. And I'm going to, and because of time, I'm going to leave us with, a verse in Surah Al-Ahzab that helps shows that we're equal in the sight of Allah. Yeah. Surah Al-Ahzab is Surah 33, verse 35. Allah says, rahim inna al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat. Wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat. So whatever male characteristics that Allah is talking about, he ties that with a female yeah. because a female actually came to the Prophet ﷺ to ask him, the Quran talks about a man all the time. What about the female? And Allah revealed this verse. <inaudible> the, 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 Surely those that are submitted in male and, the, and, 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 and female. Those that are believing men and believing women. The devoted men and devoted women. The truthful men and the truthful women. The patient men and the patient women. The humble men and the humble women. And the charitable men and the charitable women. So imat, the men that are fasting and the women that are fasting. Well hafidina furujahum al hafizat. The men that are guarding their chastity and the women that are guarding their chastity. Was that in Allah Kathira was that kirat? And those that are constantly remain remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, men and women. Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and a great reward so we see that a woman has the same the same standing in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like a man many of the verses where allah talks about men the scholars say that the women are also included in that and i hope that is sufficient inshallah alhamdulillah jazakumullah karen uh thank you so much ustaz ustaz muhammad hamad shuaib uh, he's our lecturer today. We thank him for this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, lecture and responses to our questions. May Allah reward him. May Allah count it among his good deeds. So at this junction, we're going to call today's lecture. Uh, we're going to call it uh, evening. So inshallah, uh, we'll be requesting our stars to give us a closing dua so we can come back tomorrow, inshallah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. 
uh, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity <laughs> that he'd given us to be able to share um, one or two words with ourselves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this beneficial for us today, tomorrow, and the, and the days to come. We ask Allah to forgive us all of our sins. We ask Allah to make our homes uh, the home where the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is is groomed where we can groom our kids with the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa sunnah of Allah and that of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We also ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Radio Al Muslima group and the DN, DNC group Amen. for such a wonderful job that they do bringing this type of programs into our Muslim homes. Um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to uplift them and bless them and reward them um, with a great reward in the mm. day of judgment. Mm. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting in this month of Ramadan. Mm. And may Allah keep us steadfast in the deen. And may Allah make us of those that have heard the good words of Allah and would follow the good message. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirat hasana wa qina adhaban Amin, Amin, Amin. Jazakumullah Karan. All right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're going to let us start uh, go for now. Are we here? Well, are we just here for fun? Are we here to make the millions? Are we here to, you know, breed babies? And are we? what exactly are we meant to do in this life? So that is what our topic is all about. So if you don't have, if you've been pondering, wondering, your purpose in life some people say oh maybe it's, it's the gift you know maybe you have a particular talent that you haven't discovered maybe that's the reason Allah created you for you to explore that talent and benefit and how ma- humankind can benefit from that talent but I don't think that's the case but I'll wait because I know uh, our stars is well known on this platform yeah I mean Ramadan in and out Every year, he's always a guest speaker on this platform, and we thank him uh, despite his um, tight schedule. So right now, he's actually at work. I'm like, wow. I'm also at work. We're all trying to juggle and trying to do all these for for one thing, for one thing, just for the sake of Allah, right? Because uh, And for ourselves as well, because we know there's a huge reward for whatever we do most especially in the month of ramadan this you know when you do one thing you get multiple 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 reward for just one act uh one good act so we all strive you know to attain that level of iman that level of piety so inshallah may allah accept it from each and every one of us as an act of ibadah uh the ustaz i'm talking about is ustaz muhammad hamad shaib will be our lecturer today on the purpose of life according to Islam. Without further ado, let me extend my greetings to him and that way we can get the program started. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ameen wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I wouldn't take much of a time. We're already seven minutes uh, away from the start time. So I'll take a back seat. I'll go on mute so we can, uh, that way I can enjoy the lecture just like our listeners. But before that, uh, in case you are watching us on, uh, on the social platform, remember we have our own app. Feel free, uh, go to your app store on all your devices, uh, download our app. The app is DNC Radio. So look for that app. Uh, the NC Radio is actually there. Radio Al Muslimat is also on the same app. So y- you can listen through the app. Um, by the time we get to the question and answer uh, segment, you can also call. You can place a call to the studio via the app as well. So there's a lot of features that came with that app. So please feel free and download the DNC Radio app. And in case you are on the move, maybe you're on the go, you don't have time to download, and you can simply call this number on the go. The number to call to listen is 712-775-9167. I'll repeat that once again. 